933. It's Jim and Jade in the morning. Well, I'll tell you, you just open up any newspaper, yeah. and lately it's been tough to find something to be happy about. All the negative headlines, home prices dropping like a rock, gas prices skyrocketing out of sight, shortage of jobs. Many folks just have nowhere to turn. Yeah, the economy is simply just not only affecting our wallets, it's also affecting our moods. Mm. George Estevez found evidence that there is indeed a connection between recession and depression. Today's headlines, Florida's inflation is the highest in 17 years. State Farm's rates could rise. Hollywood is proposing property tax increases, spelling out a bleak forecast for Florida. Nationally, fuel's going up while China's market melts down, all while in Iraq, a car bomb kills 15. It's sucking the life out of all of us every day. I like washing cars, I like maintaining them. Even Carlos Campos, who's been detailing cars in South Florida for 15 years. I like to look at the car once I finish washing it, how glossy it looks. But no matter how much he shines, is, business is down $300 a week. The recession causes the emotional depression. Emotional a depression, depression, Dr. William Semick says, is second only to the time after Hurricane Andrew. For about a month, my practice stopped, and all we talked about was the hurricane. Now, all any of us are talking about is the tough economy. What to do? Keep your losses in perspective. It's not health. It's not the, the life of a loved one. Really look at your options. It's taking in roommates, negotiating with the mortgage, uh, renting out the house. And don't spend money just to feel better. You know, going out and spending money to make yourself feel better when you're having financial problems makes as much sense as going out and eating chocolate cake when you're overweight and feeling bad about being obese. And most importantly, don't shut people out. You need to talk to somebody to see what they're doing, to see how they're feeling. And just don't you don't feel that you don't feel by yourself alone in the world. Everyone's feeling the squeeze, so don't let the bad times drive you into a depression. And it is doing just that to a lot of people. Joining us now with more on how we can battle the bad news blues is Dr. Gabby Cora. She's with the Executive Health and Wealth Institute. Good morning to you. Thank you for joining us once again. Good morning. The bad economy can translate into bad news for our health because uh, the mind seems to be the first thing that starts weakening, which does nothing but cause a domino effect. Absolutely. Stress is something that we experience from the outside, but it's the way that we perceive that stress mm -hmm. that brings up our those stressful levels that make it so tough on us. You know, my grandmother had a saying, you know, she said, you know, boy, you ain't seen hard times. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's probably part of it because she's right. We're not used to suffering like this, are we? Well, there are ups and downs in the economy all the time. But at the same time, these may be more stressful times for many of us. Yeah. Plus, there is this domino effect. You see one bad thing happening. Mm -hmm. People get stuck with that one thing. Yeah. Then something else happens. And then people start talking about it more and more and more rather than trying to look for more positive ways to overcome the challenges. Right. And a lot of times people tend to shut their family out when they're going into this depression, which is when you need them the most. Absolutely. One of the most important things to do here is to try to assess your situation. What is your financial situation? What is your family situation? And then try to go to concentrate on your here and now to try to resolve these issues and rely on the people that do support you yeah. and that you love because those are the ones that help you fuel your energy to overcome the challenges. I got to tell you that when I was watching the news the other day and I saw all those folks lined up outside that California bank oh, trying yeah. to get their money, I'm yeah. thinking, whoa, this is like the 1920s. So how do you stay optimistic when you see something like that? Well, it's important not to um, bring all these events as a uh, as purely critical. You have to stay put yeah. and concentrate on your here and now and not react as if you were in emergency mode. And that's one of the most important things, trying to assess the situation right. nicely. Keep it in perspective. Keeping it in perspective and not overreact to it like if, you, if the world is coming to an end. Yeah. And you know what? Unfortunately, not everybody can afford counseling or therapy. I hear it's also a good idea to, to write things down in a journal, write your thoughts down and kind of alleviate yourself? There's many ways in which we can try to control that stress. One thing would be to try to exercise on a daily, regular basis yeah, so that okay. you can modulate your physiology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something else would be to maintain your schedules and your routines as much as possible, eat in a healthy way, sleep well, right. and try to see if you can find some other ways to relax. Listen to music, mm -hmm. uh, make sure that you spend good time with family and friends, mm -hmm. and try to talk about more positive things too. Sometimes you can bring brains together and try to see how you can 
can come up with a great plan so that you can uh, maybe save some money, mm -hmm. maybe carpool instead of uh, driving on your own. Find positive solutions. Okay. Find positive solutions so, together. So I got it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my uh, my iPod, put on LL Cool J. Right. I'm going to knock you out. Uh, he is the most <laughs> frustrated rapper I've ever seen in my life. Dr. Cora, thank you as always you. for joining us. My pleasure. This too shall pass. You just have to remember that. That's right? keep go. positive. Thank you, Dr. Cora. Thank you. <laughs> All right, the ballpark battle.